These young boys today, what does she bring to the table? You got a woman that can come to the table that can make another you. What happens to the when the woman tell you I don't need a man, see? Independent, I can do for myself. Yeah, but why do you want to? Try to live your life without women. Cause women is everything. They done catch me out, they done lick, man. They've had to be independent because they ain't got the right man. Okay, so I saw this post when I was scrolling through through Instagram, and let me tell you something, okay? I'm not shocked. Let me just start off by saying I'm not shocked that Steve Harvey had this point of view, okay? I'm, I'm, let's be clear, we already know, okay? He, he definitely has, like, the mindset of a, of, a, uh, of a father with daughters who was raised in them, happy wife, happy life. Like, we already know that. Um, but, you know, he's having this conversation with Shannon Sharp as a perspective of like from man to man and talking about the state of men today. Right. So he's kind of trying to keep it onto the men to have accountability for their own actions. But as a woman, you know, I feel like I can impart just my two cents, my opinion on this conversation with the two of them, because every time that he is talking about men and women of today, he is taking all fault and all accountability off of women and putting all the blame on men. And if we look at society right now, that is just clearly untrue. There are men who are capable. There are men who are able. And there are women who are very delusional, who make it seem like you have to fit a certain criteria. And I personally, okay, feel as though for men... To sit down and say, okay, I am, it is my job to take care of you. If I have children with you, it's also my job to take care of them too. What kind of woman am I going to be, um, you know, responsible for? Am I going to be responsible for a woman who is going to mother my children in a way that is going to be to their demise? Am I going to be uh, responsible for taking care of a woman who is going to turn around and everything that I've molded, you know, her to be, every way that I've directed her, everything that I've taught her, that I showed her, that I've led her, she's going to turn around and decide one day that she doesn't want to be with me and she's going to take all that knowledge elsewhere and then try to take me for everything that I got, turn my children against me. It is not... Um, crazy or insane for men to have that state of mind that they want to be sure that they are sowing into good ground. That's what we call knowledge. It is important to know what your counterpart is bringing to the table. Women have never got confused with that. Women have never been confused um, with, you know, criteria, with, you know, he got to be tall. He got to be this. He got to look like this. He have to smell good. He got to, women have always had their list. What is wrong with men stepping up to the forefront, understanding how important it is to really and truly vet your spouse, not through the lens that all women are perfect. Women can't do no wrong. You know, women can't mess up. No. Men are thinking logically in situations with relationships where society, TV, movies have told men to take your rational mind out of this and because she's beautiful or because she's fine or because this or even though she's disrespectful to just put all that to the side and you've been with her for this amount of time, you might as well marry her. Because that's the right thing to do. They have taken logic out of it. Men have stepped up and said, oh, hold up. I use my logical thinking for everything else. Why would this be any different? I don't care how beautiful she is. I don't care how good she smells. I don't care how, you know, nice the Nana is. Is this somebody that I can commit to and who is going to commit to me? Is this somebody who's going to have my back? Is this somebody that's going to hold me down? And everybody thinks that holding down is struggle love. No. Is this somebody that I can trust to stand by my side through thick and thin, through up and down, and she is always going to have my best interest at heart? That's what holding somebody down is. That's so important. That's something that money uh, money can't buy. Somebody who's real in your corner, somebody who's truly supportive of you truly cares about you and your well-being not somebody who just with you for the money show for the glitz for the glam for the cars for the trips no somebody's gonna say babe you eating too much salt 
Your sodium's a little too high. Let me make you a smoothie. Let me make you some green juice. Matter of fact, let me give you, uh, you know, something to clean your colon out. That's talking about real love, real care, real connection. It's so important for men to find, because you see, the thing is, a lot of people think that when these conversations are had, I, I'm of the belief system that there's women out there um, with these mindsets that do not, you know, exist anymore. And I know for a fact that's not true. There are women out there who exist. Where they at? Sometimes they at work. Okay. Sometimes they in the house, being a homebody, wishing upon a star. <laughs> okay. Sometimes they in my DM. Sometimes they in my comment section. They, they are, are perfecting themselves so that when they get into, and, and the fact that they're in my DM and in my comment section should let this be known, that they're trying to get themselves to a space so that they can attract better. So that they are a full 100% person before they get into this relationship with the man who has to start from the ground up, from ground zero. But it's unhealthy to have the rhetoric that men should not have standards. That men should not be concerned about what the woman brings to the table. And for him to say she can make another you, I think to me that that kind of like exposed all the faults in his argument with just him saying that. Because you're making it seem as though this woman can, yes, this woman can assist this man in creating a child, right? He has to plant the seed. She is the oven. She cooks his seed and, you know, ding, 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 tick. Oven's ready. This child is born and it can, it's definitely another him. But she can also make uh, that other him a, a horribly feminized version of himself she can make that other him turn around and despise the the root in which that child comes from think about that we've seen it over and over again women manipulate and uh turn the minds of their children against their fathers because of their own feelings or because a relationship doesn't work out or because things don't go their way Women have the ability to mold this man's seed to be his biggest defense. To be his biggest opponents in life. To be his biggest struggles. Sometimes his downfalls. I'm, I'm keeping it real. I know I'm saying stuff that people be like, children has downfalls. But those who know what I'm talking about know what I'm talking about. A lot of women can warp the minds of their children to where this man feels like he can never catch a break because he's always going through something through you with them. And that also takes away from the fact that these that men are the ones who impregnate women. Another thing that I, I, I absolutely have to talk about as well is when he says uh, the part about, um, you know, yeah, you can do it without a man, but who wants to? He had so much to say that women are, you know, the lick, the this, the cat's meow. Women are, you know, life makers. Women are all these things. But as a man, he's saying, you know, who can live? Well, maybe you could live without a man, but who would want to? So, so you're basically agreeing with the fact that women can do to life without men. But then in the same conversation, you're saying that men can't do life without a woman. Doesn't make sense to me. We need each other. We need each other. You know, um, a lot of people always talk about, like, you know, women try to act like they're the prize, you know, and men are for sure the prize, okay? We both are. When women have the, the, the mindset that they're the prize, it's egotistical. When men have the, um, the mindset that they're the prize in the relationship, it's because of provision, because they feel like they're at a space that they are able to take care of. This woman don't have to do nothing. She don't have to, you know, work. She don't have to do anything else. She can just sit back and be led and he's going to be in the driver's seat. But the true prize is both. The true prize is a feminine woman and a masculine man meeting. 
That is true harmony. That is a bond unbreakable. That is a bond that literally anything can come from that positively. When two people come together and they're on the same mission and they have that masculine and that feminine balance, they're unstoppable. The relationship as a whole is the prize. And you know what makes that relationship um, the prize? Is the selflessness between those two people. I care for you, you care for me. I want your best interest, you want my best interest. I have your back, you have my back. Reciprocation. Not I'm the prize, so everything I do, you got to do this for me. And everything you do, I got to. It's foolishness. It's foolishness. And people don't understand how, how much harder it makes the balance of the relationships when these conversations are had, when you're trying to tell men that they're thinking in the wrong way for caring about their best interests, when you're not telling women the same thing. You're not. You, he, even saying, right? Even saying that if a woman chooses wrong, it's, uh, you know, it's not her fault. It's because of the guy she chose that she's in the predicament. Where's the woman's accountability? So he says, right? If you guys are listening keenly, he says that for a woman to be, um, you know, in a relationship with a man and she can make another him, that, you know, what else does she need to bring to the table? So that is alluding to the fact that any woman that comes into a relationship, because she has the ability to procreate, she doesn't need to have the ability to do anything else to serve or uh, to respect or to uphold principles um, or anything else just because she has the ability to procreate. That is enough for her to bring to a relationship, and that is a bold-faced lie. That's not true. What about uh, respect? What about decency? What about class? What about honor? What about honesty? What about cleanliness? I, I can keep going. That's the problem is that a lot of women have the ideology that because I have uh, the ability to procreate or because I have a womb that that's good. I'm good enough. I could listen, any man will be happy to be with me because I got a womb. That's delusional. That makes no sense. Another thing that I definitely wanted to talk about is the fact that he's saying, try living without a woman. I've never heard a man anywhere say that they don't need women. I've never heard them say that. But I constantly hear women say it. We have a married woman who made a song about how she don't need no man. Think about it. I've never heard men say, I don't need no, I don't need these women. The problem is, is that uh, a lot of people don't like when women don't have a stronghold on men. And when a man can, you know, explore options of women, but he doesn't sit down and commit to one woman, people don't like that. They don't like the fact that they don't have control over a man who understands his value. They hate that. A woman can know her value plus add tax. A man, if he knows his own value, people always trying to humble him. Oh, he, oh, he too arrogant. He needs to chill. He needs to realize it's not that serious. Society does it. Women do it. And you'd be lucky if his mama didn't do it to him first. We got to be real. How are we going to get people to be together and have actual happy, healthy relationships is if we're being real. Not gimmicky, not just saying stuff because we feel like it sound good. Another thing is that he's talking about, uh, you know, try living without him. But then he he goes, he was saying, oh, well, you don't need to, you you don't want to live with a man, or you could live without a man. Why would you want to? And then he brings it right back around to men. Y'all lost. Y'all tripping. Y'all need to stop doing this. Is it that, or is it that? Uh, you know, a lot of men have kind of figured out the code from a younger age and now they're going to be able to choose wisely. 
Whereas some people who haven't had the ability to choose wisely are now looking back like, dang, I didn't have that knowledge. Let me stop them from doing that and getting it right. Because I got to be the one that's right. Happy wife, happy life. The woman comes first. She's the this. She's the that. She's the best. She's the all these things. These men need to stop trying to go around that. Why? My strongest point that I wanted to make in this video is he said that women have changed because they've had to. Women have changed because they've wanted to. Women have made changes purposefully to be liberated from their men. Some of them unknowingly, most of them knowingly, because they want the freedom to be as out there and as wild and as free and as untied down as they possibly can be. It has gotten so bad that women who are actually in marriages and have nothing wrong in their relationships are fighting to go out there and be single and be free like the single women out there because they feel like they're just not having so much fun. They feel like they're missing out. They reminisce to their younger days and then they want to go out there and be out in the streets just like everybody else. Women are not focused on class. Women are not focused on honor. Women are not focused on motherhood. Women are not focused on evolving and being grown women and actually, uh, you know, loving the space that they're in. A lot of women are so stuck in the past that they still moving like they in high school, they dating like they in high school, they acting like they in high school, they partying every weekend like they in high school because they cannot appreciate growth. They don't know how to be a grown woman. Maybe they ain't seen one. Or maybe they're in denial. And they feel like the only thing that is, uh, you know, vibrant and the only thing that makes them feel good is if they go all the way back to how they felt when they were in high school and try to replicate it. And they're lying to themselves. And the problem is, is that everybody can look around and see somebody in society who hasn't evolved. You could see a woman or even a man from the past and you'd be like, he is stuck in the 70s. <laughs> that man is stuck in the 90s. Like, you can clearly see it. That's, the, that's what these women are becoming because they're afraid because of social media. Oh, you know, I don't want, you know, I don't want to be like this and I don't want to be like that. And I don't want to be, like that. and instead of being where they are and beautifully evolving, finding the beauty, creating the beauty, they themselves force their husbands to marry them. Oh, we've been together for this amount of time. You need to marry me. Or, you know, we have children now. We need to get married or whatever the situation is. Oh, we haven't been together for seven years. You know, we might as well get married. Women force their spouses into marrying them. And then they turn around and look at their spouse as whack because he's married. Think about that. Think about that. Think about what I'm truly saying. Women force men into marriage. And then they don't want the man because they feel like he whack because he a husband. And they feel lame because they're a wife. Think about it. That's why it's so important for men to grow into the men that they're supposed to be. And that's why it's so important for a woman to understand her space so that she can attract a man who is a strong leader who is going to lead her in the way that she should go. Because women need direction. When a man leads a woman... A woman who, who is in tune with her truest nature. This is why I said before, men are the prize. Because a man who can lead a woman and, and help her to direct her thoughts and direct her energy and direct her mind in the way that she should go. She is going to be a woman that flourishes in every aspect of her life. Because she needs that direction and that guidance and that assistance in that way. Somebody who can teach her, somebody who can guide her, somebody who can lead her. And of course, a woman who is able to be led, able to take leadership, able to not get so defensive and understand. That's a beautiful thing. We need each other. 
We need each other to be the best versions of ourselves. That's my opinion, y'all. That's my opinion. I'd love to hear you guys' opinions on this in the comment section down below. So make sure you guys comment and tell me you guys' thoughts on this video. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. And I will see you guys in the next one. Love you. Thank you.